NX Integrated Patient Transport and Loading System is an emergency patient handling system designed to transport a patient over various terrain and to be loaded into and unloaded from an ambulance for ground-based transportation. The NX is designed to help reduce the risk of injury to medical service personnel by eliminating or minimizing the amount of lifting required during raising, lowering, or loading into or unloading from an ambulance and should be used with compatible Ferno fastening systems. This video contains general instructions for the use, operation, and care of the Ferno NX Integrated Patient Transport and Loading System. The instructions are not all-inclusive. Operators using the NX system must read and understand the NX user's manual, have training on the proper use of the NX, and have emergency medical service training, including a working knowledge of emergency patient handling procedures. Safe and proper use of this product is solely at the discretion of the user. Safety information is included as a service to the user. All other safety measures taken by the user should be within and under consideration of applicable regulations and local protocol. It's the user's responsibility to ensure safe practices for the patient and themselves. A minimum of two trained operators is required. Operators must work together and maintain control of the NX at all times. Communicate with each other and use coordinated movements to operate the NX. Stay with the patient at all times and always use restraints to secure the patient. An excessive load or non-powered operation may require the operators to lift a portion of the load. Lift only the weight you can safely handle. Use additional help when working with heavy loads. For placement of helpers, see Using Additional Help in the NX User's Manual. Finally, make sure you keep detailed training records. Ferno cares about operator and patient safety. For more information, the Injury Free Program from Ferno provides training on nutrition, exercise, management of stress, fatigue, ergonomics, and injury prevention, all from an emergency medical service perspective. You can learn more about the Injury Free Program by visiting fernoems.com slash injuryfree. Before using the NX, install the inline fastener according to directions in the mounting block floor system and inline fastening system user's manuals. You'll also need to attach any accessories you ordered with your NX. Specific directions are provided in the NX and or accessory manual. With the power on, check the NX battery level by looking at the charger status icon on the lower right corner of the display. The battery icon represents the charge remaining in the battery. A lightning bolt indicates charging is in progress. Green means the battery is fully charged. Yellow means a moderate charge remains. And red indicates a low charge remains. When a low charge is present, one third of the indicator will be steady red. If the icon is flashing between an empty battery outline and a full red battery, the charge is depleted. Exchange for a charged battery as soon as possible or connect the battery to a power source. To charge the battery through a household electric outlet, make sure the NX power switch is in the off position. Remove the battery from the NX by lifting the shock frame and removing the battery cover. Grasp the battery cable plug and disconnect the cable from the battery port. Use the battery carry handle to lift the battery up and away from the cradle and connect the battery adapter cable and battery charger to the NX battery. Then, connect the battery charger to an electric outlet. To connect the battery to the NX, verify the power switch is in the off position and raise the shock frame. Angle and slide the battery into the cradle. Press down to secure the battery in place in the cradle. Connect the battery cable plug to the battery port. Replace the battery cover and lower the shock frame. When the NX is secured in an inline fastener with supplied power, 
It will disable powered operation of the NX and provide ongoing battery charging. First, make sure the inline fastener has power through the ambulance ignition system, inverter, shoreline, or outlet switch. Then, simply secure the NX with the fastening system and the battery will begin charging. Follow the installation instructions for the inline in the inline installation and user's manuals. Users can program the NX so it stops automatically at the proper loading height for the assigned ambulance. To set or change the loading height, raise or lower the NX until the loading wheels roll directly onto the ambulance floor. Make sure the wheels are resting on the floor, the safety bar is caught by the safety hook, and that the loading end legs have not lifted off the ground. Press the Mode Select button four times to enter the Load Height Set Mode. Press and hold the Plus Extend button before the timer expires. Continue to hold the button while the five second timer expires. Turn the power switch off, wait a second, and then turn the power back on to commit the new setting to the system's memory. Test loading and unloading to verify the NX stops at the new loading height. The patient restraints are positioned both above and below the pad. The pelvis strap and harness attach to the NX with a bracket and post system. To attach the straps, orient the bracket on the restraint strap with the bend facing the center of the NX and the tab up. Finish by inserting the retaining plug into the bracket. The leg restraints attach by guiding the buckle or tang through the restraint loop after it's been fed through the bracket on the NX. Controls for all electronic features of the NX are found at the foot end and the display panel provides the operator with the current status of each. The display is on when the power switch is on and is off when the power switch is off or when the NX enters the sleep mode. To activate the display, turn the power switch on if needed or press the minus retract button to awaken the NX from sleep mode. The power switch is located on the operator's right side of the display. The display is divided into four zones. The NX zone displays an image of the NX with sections color-coded to indicate the current status of the system. The color of the legs and patient surface indicate the current status of these areas. On the legs, green means they may be extended and or retracted. White indicates the legs will not extend or retract, and blue means the NX is in a direct power mode. In the direct power mode, only the blue legs will move when the plus extend or minus retract button is pressed. The timer zone illuminates when the NX is in a special operating mode such as direct power. A countdown timer is visible in the lower left corner of the display indicating the time remaining to initiate the action. If the countdown timer is allowed to expire, the NX returns to its default operational mode and normal display returns. The status zone illuminates to provide status condition information and alerts the user to important or unsafe conditions or faults. Based on the condition, a warning triangle, other symbol, and or alphanumeric code may be displayed. The warning triangle is yellow for medium level notices and red for high priority notices. A complete symbol glossary is provided in the user's manual. The NX will sound a series of beeps when the status indicator is displayed. The number of beeps is dependent on the severity of the situation. The alarm continues to sound until the status returns to normal. A high priority status will cause the NX to beep two plus three times, followed by a pause, and then a repeat of the sequence. Two beeps every 15 seconds indicate a medium priority status, 
and low priorities cause the system to beep once a minute. The battery zone indicates the charge of the battery. Green represents a fully charged battery. Yellow is a moderate charge and red is a low charge. When the charge is depleted, the battery icon flashes between an empty battery outline and a fully red battery. The NX is powered by a rechargeable 36 volt DC lithium iron phosphate battery. The battery is installed under the patient surface behind the display. It has no memory and you don't have to fully discharge it before recharging. Minimum charging time is 15 minutes after one transport and maintaining the charge using an ICS. Maximum charging time is 1 hour and 45 minutes using the AC battery charger with a depleted battery. Actual charging time varies based on frequency of recharge, depth of discharge, and battery age. If a battery becomes deeply discharged, extend the charging time. Patient weight and temperature affect the amount of use available from each battery charge. Check the NX battery level by looking at the battery status icon on the lower right corner of the display. The battery icon represents the remaining charge in the battery. A lightning bolt indicates charging is in progress. Green means the battery is fully charged. Yellow means a moderate charge remains and red indicates a low charge remains. When a low charge is present, one third of the indicator will be steady red. If the icon is flashing between an empty battery outline and a full red battery, the charge is depleted. Swap for a charged battery as soon as possible or connect the battery to a power source such as the ICS or NX battery charger. To charge the battery through a household electric outlet, make sure the NX power switch is in the off position. Remove the battery from the NX by lifting the shock frame and removing the battery cover. Grasp the battery cable plug and disconnect the cable from the battery port. Use the battery carry handle to lift the battery up and away from the cradle and connect the battery adapter cable and battery charger to the NX battery. Then connect the battery charger to an electric outlet. To reconnect the battery to the NX, Verify the power switch is in the off position and raise the shock frame. Angle and slide the battery into the cradle. Press down to secure the battery in the cradle. Connect the battery cable plug to the battery port. Replace the battery cover and lower the shock frame. When the NX is secured into an integrated charging system fastener, or ICS for short, with supplied power, it will disable powered operation of the NX and provide ongoing battery charging. First, make sure the ICS has power through the ambulance ignition system, inverter, shoreline, or outlet switch. Then, simply secure the NX in the fastening system and the battery will begin charging. Follow installation instructions for the ICS that are provided in the ICS for NX installation and user's manual. The power switch is located on the operator's right side of the display. Keep the switch in the on position for all NX operations. After 10 minutes of non-use, the NX will enter a sleep mode to conserve power. If the NX is secured in a fastening system with a powered ICS, the power can be left on. The ICS disables the NX powered mode and charges the battery. If the NX will not be used for more than 30 minutes, turn the power switch off to conserve battery power. When the NX is powered on, allow the system to boot for one to two seconds. Then, press the minus retract button once and the NX will come to life within moments. When no buttons are pushed on the NX for 10 minutes, it will go into a power save or sleep mode. When you're ready to use the system again, 
Simply push the minus retract button and the desired activity will begin immediately. Two sets of extend and retract buttons are affixed to the control end of the NX where they're accessible to the operator's right hand. The plus extend button extends the legs. The minus retract button retracts the legs. One set of buttons is affixed to the telescoping handle while the other set is affixed to the guide bar. The function of each set of buttons is identical. When a button is pressed, one set of legs extends or retracts until both sets of legs are equally extended. Continue pressing the button to extend or retract the NX. In addition to stopping at the maximum and minimum heights, the NX stops automatically when it reaches the factory set maximum recommended transport height and the user set loading height. When the NX stops at the transport height, Press either the plus extend or minus retract button again to continue extending or retracting the legs. If the NX is being supported by the ambulance floor, pressing either button will extend or retract only one set of legs at a time. The pad is fitted with eight locking discs that secure it to the patient's surface. Position the pad on the patient's surface and raise the backrest and shock frame as needed. Press down on the center of the pad to guide the locking discs through the seat panel. Twist the discs 90 degrees in either direction to lock them in place. Reverse the process to remove the pad. The backrest is equipped with a pressurized cylinder to assist raising and lowering it from 0 to 76 degrees to achieve maximum patient comfort or medical necessity. With a heavy patient, support the patient's weight before adjusting the backrest. With a light patient, control the upward movement of the backrest so it doesn't move too quickly. To adjust the backrest, loosen or unbuckle the pelvis and or chest straps if needed. Support the weight of the backrest and patient and squeeze either red control handle toward the frame, then raise or lower the backrest to the desired position. Lastly, fasten and adjust the patient restraints as needed. The sidearms provide patient security and comfort. They're attached to the backrest and move with it when the backrest is adjusted. To rotate a sidearm, push the round red button in the center of the sidearm mount casting and rotate the sidearm to a new position. Locking positions are at approximately 45 degree intervals. The sidearms also have a wide position, which is useful for a large patient or for starting IV lines. To swing the sidearms outward, Slide the release lever away from the mount casting to unlock the sidearm and swing it away from the patient's surface. Push the sidearm toward the center of the NX to engage the lock in the inline position. The storage position is rotated toward the loading end of the NX aligned with the backrest. The telescoping handles are useful when rolling and maneuvering the NX. The handles have two positions, fully retracted or fully extended. To change handle positions, press the red button on the end of the handle and push or pull the handle to its desired position. Release the button and pull or push the handle until it locks. Use the telescoping handles only when they're in the lock position. The attached set of control buttons remain with the hand grip in either position. The telescoping frame shortens the NX to improve maneuverability in tight spaces. There are two lock positions, extended for normal operation and retracted, 
A third unlocked, fully compressed position shortens the frame to its minimum length. Use only a locked position when lifting the NX. The telescoping frame must be locked in the extended position before loading the NX into an ambulance or unloading it from an ambulance. To adjust the telescoping load frame, loosen or unbuckle the pelvis strap if needed, then raise the backrest. Adjust and fasten the pelvis strap. Squeeze the red telescoping frame release handle and begin pushing or pulling the frame, then release the handle. Continue pushing or pulling until it locks into its new position. Adjust the shock frame only when standing at the control or foot end of the NX. Before adjusting the shock frame, loosen or unfasten the leg restraints. Use an underhand grip to lift the frame until it locks into the raised position. Refasten or tighten the leg restraints. To lower the shock frame, loosen or unfasten the leg restraint. Support the weight of the shock frame and the patient with both hands. Lift slightly and then press the shock frame levers to disengage the support bars. Lower the frame and adjust or fasten the leg restraints. The main frame of the NX acts as an attachment point to secure a variety of accessories to the NX. Accessories may be attached to either side of the NX with few limitations. As an example, there's an optional IV pole. To attach, first lift the red lock handle on the IV pole base. Angle the base of the IV pole so that the lip of the base catches the groove on the inside of the NX accessory rail. Lower the red lock handle to secure the IV pole. To remove the IV pole, pull the red release tab and raise the lock handle. Angle the IV pole and remove it from the NX. For a list of accessories that mount on the accessory rail, or for the NX in general, see the NX user's manual or contact Verno. There are two wheel locks to help keep the NX from rolling during patient transfer and certain medical procedures. They're attached to the control end transport wheels. Push the lock lever down to engage the lock and push the top of the lock lever to unlock. The lock stops the rotation of the wheel when engaged. They're not a substitute for operator control and should never be used to slow a moving NX. The operators must remain with the NX and keep control of it at all times. Do not leave the patient unattended. The NX lighting system provides light to see the terrain around the NX and increases operator and patient safety by increasing visibility of the NX. The surround light bars are white and red lights that span the length of each side of the NX to increase visibility. They can flash or provide steady light. Drive lights are affixed to each actuator and illuminate the ground with steady white light. Both surround light bars and drive lights are on or off at the same time. The NX safety lighting system is controlled by two buttons. Push the first button to turn the scene lights on. This setting turns the drive lights and surround light bars on, which illuminate with steady white light. An LED in the upper corner of the button indicates that the lights are on. Press the first button again to turn the scene lights off. Press the second button to turn the emergency lights on. In emergency lights mode, the drive lights are on and the surround light bars flash in a sequence of red, red, white. The emergency lights are especially useful in providing additional scene safety when you're deployed to a dark outdoor incident. Press the second button again to turn the emergency lights off. At any time, 
You can press the other button to switch between scene lights and emergency lights. All lights turn off when the NX enters sleep mode. Use the safety bar release levers to disengage each safety bar from the safety hook. A set of release levers is located on the loading end legs and on the telescoping frame. Release each safety bar from the safety hook by turning the lever counterclockwise. You'll use these levers when unloading the NX from an ambulance. The NX features an integrated oxygen cylinder holder mounted to the telescoping frame. It can carry a D or jumbo D size portable oxygen cylinder up to a maximum of 5.3 inches in diameter by 18.75 inches in length. Spherical Technologies DD light cylinder is also compatible with the holder. To secure a cylinder on the holder, center it on the holder. Wrap the straps around the cylinder and thread the strap through both D-rings. Thread the fastening strap back through the inside D-ring. With one hand holding the oxygen bottle in place, firmly pull the loose end of the strap to cinch the fastening straps tight. The NX features a unique patient restraint system that includes a combination pelvis strap shoulder harness, chest strap, and a two-piece leg restraint. The pelvis straps have red webbing near the buckles. Attach the pelvis strap to the NX at the mounting post on each side of the seat panel. Orient the bracket on the restraint strap with the bend facing the center of the NX and the tab up. Slide the post into the bracket and pull the post upward to seat the post in the small end of the bracket. Verify the brackets are seated on the posts and the strap is not twisted. Insert the retaining plugs. The chest straps have only black webbing and are connected to the shoulder straps, which have red webbing near the links. Attach the chest strap brackets to the mounting post at each side of the backrest using the same method. Verify the posts are seated in the brackets and the strap is not twisted. Insert the retaining plugs. Each strap of the leg restraint has a loop. To attach the leg restraint, guide the loop through the restraint bracket on the NX, then insert the buckle or tang through the loop. Pull the strap tight against the restraint bracket. To remove the restraints from the NX, first unbuckle them. Use the pull loop to pull the retaining plugs out of the brackets, and then press the restraint brackets down toward the mainframe to unseat them from the posts. Remove the restraint brackets from the NX mounted post. To remove the leg restraint, feed the buckle or tang through the loop. Then, remove the loop from the NX mounted bracket. To secure a patient on the NX, first unbuckle the harness, pelvis, and leg restraints, and position the straps out of the way. Transfer the patient onto the NX following local protocols, then adjust the backrest, shock frame, and restraint length as needed. Lay the shoulder straps on the patient's chest with the links extended to the patient's waist. Guide the pelvis strap tang through both shoulder strap links and fasten the buckle. Adjust the pelvis strap and shoulder straps so they're snug on the patient. Fasten the chest strap across the patient's rib cage, then fasten the leg restraint across the patient's legs. You should notice that red straps connect to other red straps, while black straps connect to other black straps. To transfer a patient onto the NX, Unfasten the patient restraints and arrange the straps so they won't interfere with transferring the patient. If needed, rotate the sidearms out of the way. 
Place the index beside the patient and press the plus extend or minus retract button to adjust to the patient's level. Lock the wheels. Transfer the patient onto the NX using approved DMS procedures and following your local protocols. Adjust the backrest, shock frame, and restraint length as needed. Fasten and adjust the patient restraints. Before moving the NX or changing its position, make sure the sheets and other articles will not interfere with its operation. Unlock the wheel locks. Press the plus, extend, or minus retract buttons until the NX reaches the factory set transport height. To transfer a patient off the NX and onto another surface, roll the NX near the destination surface and press the plus extend or minus retract button to adjust the NX to or slightly above the destination surface and lock the wheels. Rotate the sidearm out of the way and unfasten the patient restraints. Arrange the straps so they won't interfere with transferring the patient off the NX. Transfer the patient onto the destination surface using approved emergency medical procedures and following local protocols. Fasten and arrange the patient restraints so they won't interfere with using the NX. Before moving the NX or changing its position, make sure sheets and other articles won't interfere with its operation. Unlock the wheel locks and press the plus extend or minus retract button to the factory set transport height. Raising or lowering with a patient on the NX requires a minimum of two trained operators who are communicating, working together, and maintaining control of the NX at all times. Keep both hands on the NX mainframe. Maintain control of the NX so it doesn't shift during raising or lowering, but don't lift. Allow the NX to do the work. Press the plus extend button to extend the legs and raise the NX or minus retract button to retract the legs and lower the NX until it reaches the desired height. During the position change, move with the NX and maintain your grasp on the mainframe. Again, don't lift. Allow the NX to do the work. Note that the color of the display zone assists the operator in understanding the height condition of the NX. The NX features a factory set safe transport height setting. It can be reached by pressing and holding either the plus extend or minus retract button, depending if the NX is lower or higher than the preset safe transport position. The NX will automatically stop at the safe transport height, which is 36 inches to the patient frame. When the NX patient surface on the display is colored white, you're operating at a safe transport height. When the patient's surface on the display is yellow or red, the patient's surface is not at a safe height for patient transporting. Rolling the NX above the maximum safe transport height can increase the chance for the NX to tip. If you're above the safe transport height, an audible alarm will sound. The NX lifts 700 pounds unassisted. Extremely heavy loads may require assistance from the operators and helpers. If the NX will not extend the legs, trained operators should stand at opposite ends of the NX and use an underhanded grip to grasp the mainframe. Guide any helpers where and how to grasp the NX. When two helpers are available, position one at each end of the NX to assist the main operators. When four helpers are available, position one at each end of the NX to assist the main operators and place the other two on the sides. Always work in pairs to help maintain NX balance. Press the plus extend button and tell the loading end operator and helpers to help raise the NX. Allow the NX to lift the load. The operators and helpers need to provide lift assistance only for the portion of the load that exceeds the standard load capacity. Together, raise the NX to the desired height then hold the NX at that position. Slowly, 
Lower your hands to test that the NX is stabilized at the new position. Relax your grasp when you're certain the NX is stabilized at the new position. For more information, see Using Additional Help in the NX User's Manual. Securely fasten the patient restraints around the patient before rolling the NX. Raise or lower the NX to or below the factory set transport height. Position both operators at the sides of the NX. Grasp and maintain control of the NX using the mainframe. If two additional helpers are used, position them at the sides of the NX with the operators at control and loading ends. When four additional helpers are used, position two on each side of the NX with the operators at control and loading ends. To cross a low obstacle such as a threshold, Lift slightly and roll the NX across the obstacle. Avoid jarring the patient. Roll the NX only at or below the recommended transport height. Rolling above this height can increase the chance for the NX to tip. An audible alarm sounds and the control panel will turn yellow when the NX is above the maximum transport height. Do not roll the NX sideways. Rolling the NX sideways can increase the chance for it to tip and injure the patient and or the operators. Roll the NX downhill, control N first. If this is not medically appropriate, roll the NX loading N first, but maintain NX balance while rolling it downhill. The loading end operator must exert upward force on the mainframe. The chair position allows a patient to be transferred to a seated position on the NX patient surface. Follow local protocols to determine the best situations to use the chair position. To place the NX into the chair position, roll the NX towards the control end to position all four swivel wheels in the same orientation. Unbuckle the leg restraints and arrange the straps so they'll not interfere with NX operation then raise the shock frame. Press the chair position button, which is the third button on the display. A 15 second timer will begin. To cancel the chair position at that point, press the chair position button again or allow the timer to expire. To continue to the chair position, press the minus retract button before the timer expires, maintain control, and the legs will adjust to place the NX in the chair position. Lock the wheel locks. Unbuckle the remaining restraints and adjust one or both side arms out of the way. Adjust the backrest to suit the patient. Have one operator or assistant steady the NX so it will not move as the patient is seated. Assist the patient onto the NX following approved emergency medical procedures and local protocols. Fasten and adjust the patient restraints. Before moving the NX or changing its position, make sure sheets and other articles will not interfere with its operation. Inform the patient you're about to adjust the NX. Verify the display is not showing the chair position screen as the regular operating screen should appear after the timer expires. Press the plus extend or minus retract button until the NX reaches the desired height. Since the NX always seeks to level itself, it will not raise or lower until the legs are equally extended. Make further adjustments to the backrest, shock frame, and or sidearms as needed for patient comfort and medical care. Unlock the wheels before moving the NX. The position indicator lights projects a red light on the ambulance floor as a visual aid for operators, but has no effect on NX operation. Activated during loading and unloading, the lights help the operators locate the proper position to stop rolling the NX and extend or retract the control end legs. 
The red line shows the approximate position of the intermediate loading wheels. If the line is visible on the ambulance floor, then the intermediate loading wheels and the majority of the load are inside the ambulance. Be aware that the terrain around the ambulance can affect the loading height. If uneven ground or an incline prevents the NX from rolling smoothly into or out of an ambulance, press the plus extend or minus retract button to adjust the height as needed. Always talk to the patient and reassure them before making changes to the NX height and during the loading and unloading process. Before loading the NX, extend and lock the telescoping load frame, raise the folding ambulance bumper if present, and align the NX and keep it parallel with the ambulance sidewalls. While holding the NX with both hands, push the plus extend button to raise the NX to the user set loading height, or if needed, press the plus extend or minus retract button to position the loading wheels level with the ambulance floor. Align the NX with the inline and then roll the NX into the open patient compartment until the loading wheels and loading frame safety bar pass the safety hook. Visually confirm the safety bar has been captured by the safety hook and verify by attempting to pull the NX out of the ambulance. The NX must be stopped by the safety hook. If not, adjust the height and retry. Push the minus retract button to begin retracting the loading end legs. The legs will retract slightly and then stop when they're no longer supporting the weight of the NX. This is a safety check to verify the load is being supported. With the display showing the loading end legs green and ready to retract, press the minus retract button and completely retract the loading end legs. As the front end loading legs completely retract, the NX institutes a kick-up maneuver to position the control end slightly above the level of the ambulance floor. This action helps aid a smooth transition into the ambulance and reduces bumps for the patient and operators as each set of wheels roll into the vehicle. Push the NX into the ambulance until the intermediate wheels and position indicator lights are on the ambulance floor and the intermediate safety bar passes the safety hook and then stop. Push the minus retract button to lower the frame slightly. The legs will retract and then stop when the intermediate load wheels contact the floor and the legs are no longer supporting the weight of the NX. Visually confirm the intermediate safety bar has passed the safety hook and that the intermediate safety bar will engage the hook. Pull the NX against the safety hook to verify the intermediate safety bar has been captured by the hook. Press the minus retract button to begin retracting the control end legs. The legs will retract slightly and then stop when they're no longer supporting the weight of the NX. This is a safety check to verify that the load is being supported. Press the minus retract button to finish retracting the control end legs. Push the NX into the ambulance and secure it in the fastening system. Be aware that the terrain around the ambulance can affect the loading height. If uneven ground or an incline prevents the NX from rolling smoothly into or out of the ambulance, press the plus extend or minus retract button to adjust the height as needed. Always talk to the patient and reassure them before making changes to the NX height during the loading and unloading process. Before unloading the NX from the ambulance, Raise the folding ambulance bumper if present. Release the NX from the fastening system and roll it a few inches from the power contacts. Push the minus retract button to awaken the NX if necessary. Roll it out of the ambulance until the safety hook captures the center of the intermediate safety bar. Visually confirm that the safety bar has been captured by the safety hook. Press the plus extend button to extend the control end legs. Stop pressing when the legs are supporting the load. Ask the load end operator to disengage the intermediate safety bar from the safety hook. Roll the NX out of the ambulance until the safety hook captures the center of the load frame safety bar. 
Press the plus extend button to extend the loading end legs. Ask the load end operator to disengage the load end safety bar from the safety hook. While maintaining your grasp on the main frame and guide handle with both hands, roll the NX out of the ambulance and then stop. Press the minus retract button to lower the NX to the factory set transport height. Always use two operators when a patient is on the NX. If local protocols permit, an empty NX may be operated by one trained operator. Press the plus, extend, or minus retract button to achieve the desired height. When loading or unloading an empty NX with only one operator, follow the same procedure as for two operators. Guide the NX towards the safety hook so the hook catches the center of each safety bar during unloading and that the head end safety bar catches the hook and the intermediate safety bar passes the safety hook on loading. Use the position indicator lights to assist you in the proper times to extend or retract the control end legs. The operator must support and balance a portion of the weight when the control end legs are off the ground. The mode button is located on the operator's left side of the display. The mode button provides access to direct power, which allows the operators to independently control one or both sets of legs to raise, lower, load, or unload the NX. Use the mode button to select from three direct power modes. These are considered alternate modes and are not part of normal operation of the NX. Each button press cycles to the next mode with matching images on the display. The button press sequence is 1. Direct power both legs. 2. Direct power loading end legs only. 3. Direct power control end legs only. The fourth button press enters the loading height set mode and the fifth push returns the system to the standard operating mode. In each direct power mode, the background is white and the leg or legs to be moved are blue. A countdown timer of 15 seconds is shown on the display. If no further action is taken in that time, the NX reverts to its standard or normal operation mode. Use extreme care when using a direct power mode with a patient on the NX. The NX will not automatically match or maintain an even extension between the loading end and control end legs. Avoid placing the patient's surface at a severe angle, as patient and or operator injury can occur if the load shifts. Raise or lower the NX without power. Raise or lower in stages, repeating until the NX is at its desired height. To start, raise the backrest and shock frame as needed, and remove the actuator release handles from their mounts. With both operators standing at one end of the NX, one operator grasps the mainframe with both hands and supports and balances the NX. The handle operator uses the actuator release handle and together the two operators raise or lower the legs. Communicate and work together and do not place the patient at a severe angle. To raise the NX, raise the end of the NX several inches off the ground. Tell the handle operator you're ready for a position change. The handle operator squeezes the actuator release handle and pushes the legs down until the transport wheels are on the ground. Release the handle to lock the legs. The lead operator maintains his or her grasp on the NX and verifies it is stable at the new position. Move to the opposite end of the NX and repeat the steps until it's in its desired height. To lower the NX, assume the load and communicate to the handle operator you're ready for a position change. As the handle operator, 
grasp the mainframe and squeeze the handle while assisting the lowering process. Release the handle to lock the legs. As lead operator, maintain your grasp on the NX and verify it's stable at the new position. Move to the opposite end of the NX and repeat the steps until it's at its desired height. If you're raising or lowering the NX with no patient on it, stand at opposite ends of the NX and squeeze the handles at the same time. Control the descent of the NX and keep it level as you fold it. The independent leg design of the NX allows the operators to reduce the amount of lifting required even when loading the NX into an ambulance without power. Raise the NX to the loading height for your ambulance using non-powered raising techniques. Roll the NX into the ambulance and secure the load end safety bar on the safety hook. Verify the NX is engaged with the hook before proceeding. Remove the loading end actuator release handle from its mount under the backrest. Stand together at the loading end of the NX and grasp the mainframe with one hand and the loading end legs with the other hand. As the handle operator squeezes the actuator release handle, both operators fold the legs. Release the handle to lock the legs. Resume your grasp on the mainframe and roll the NX into the ambulance until the intermediate safety bar passes the safety hook. Verify the NX is engaged with the hook before proceeding. Squeeze the loading end actuator release handle one more time to verify the loading end legs have folded completely. Position the handle out of the way so it will not interfere with the fastening system. Remove the control end actuator release handle from its mount under the shock frame. Stand together at the control end of the NX. Grasp the mainframe with one hand and the control end legs with the other hand. The handle operator squeezes the actuator release handle and both operators fold the legs. Release the handle to lock the legs. Resume your grasp on the mainframe and roll the NX into the ambulance and secure it in the fastening system. The independent leg design of the NX allows the operators to reduce the amount of lifting required even when unloading the NX from an ambulance without power. Remove the control end actuator release handle from its mount under the shock frame. Disengage the fastening system and roll the NX out of the ambulance until the intermediate safety bar engages the safety hook. Verify the NX is engaged with the hook before proceeding. The handle operator squeezes the actuator release handle and lowers the control end legs to the ground and then releases the handle to lock the legs in the extended position. As one operator disengages the intermediate safety bar from the safety hook, both operators roll the NX out of the ambulance until the loading end safety bar engages the safety hook. Verify the NX is engaged with the hook before proceeding. Remove the loading end actuator release handle from its mount under the backrest. The lead operator supports and balances the load throughout the process. The handle operator squeezes the actuator release handle and lowers the control end legs to the ground and then releases the handle to lock the legs in the extended position. Disengage the NX from the safety hook and roll the NX out of the ambulance. Lower the NX to the recommended transport height or fold it using non-powered techniques. Do not put the patient at an extreme angle. To disinfect the restraints, first remove them from the NX. Spray the metal buckles and slide bars with a disinfectant cleaner following the disinfectant manufacturer's instructions for application method and contact time. Do not immerse the buckles or slide bars in liquid. Hang the restraints to air dry if needed. Attach only clean dry restraints to the NX. To clean the restraints, Immerse the restraint webbing in a solution of mild soap and water. Don't immerse the metal buckles or slide bars in the solution. Repeatedly dip the webbing in clear water to rinse. 
Hang the restraints to air dry and attach only clean, dry restraints to the NX. To disinfect and clean the pad, remove it from the NX, apply disinfectant to the pad following the disinfectant manufacturer's instructions for application method and contact time. Use a soft cloth to wash with warm, soapy water. Rinse the pad with clear water and dry with a towel or hang and allow it to air dry. When you're done, attach the pad back on the NX. To disinfect the NX, wipe all surfaces with disinfectant. Follow the disinfectant manufacturer's instructions for application method and contact time. Ferno recommends you visually inspect the NX for damage as you disinfect it. To clean the NX, remove the battery and cover the plug on the battery connector cable with a bag. Tie the bag closed or use a rubber band to make a watertight seal over the plug. Verify that all cords, cables, connectors, and so on are connected. Do not spray water directly into ports, wire harnesses, cable connections, and etc. Remove the patient restraints, pad, and any accessories. Hand clean all surfaces of the NX with warm water and a mild detergent or pressure wash the NX within the limits already described. Rinse with warm, clear water. Dry the NX with a towel or allow it to air dry. Have your services equipment maintenance personnel inspect the NX regularly. Follow the checklists in the user's manual and operate the NX through all its functions as described in the user's manual. All persons operating the NX should have read the user's manual and received training by an authorized person. Practice with the NX before using the system with patients until you're comfortable using it. As always, agencies should keep detailed records of all training and maintenance events concerning the NX system. Thanks for watching this Ferno training video on the NX Integrated Patient Transport and Loading System.